Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about concurrency utilities in Java. Now concurrency is a huge topic and it's not possible to cover this into a 10 or 15 minutes tutorials. So treat this particular session as an introductory session where I will talk about some of the most relevant classes which you need to know when you talk about concurrency. We have been talking about this whole concept of concurrency programming throughout the thread tutorials as well and the basic idea is that you would like to do multiple things at the same time that's the basic idea now in that context java does provide a lot of utilities and packages especially the java.util.concurrent package is one of the most popular package which you need to use whenever you are dealing with concurrency programming paradigms in java so with that let's have a look at what does this java.util.concurrent package contains so broadly it contains a lot of utility classes which can be very useful for you when you are writing the concurrent programming code apart from that it will also provide some basic ideas around the locking functionality and the atomic packages as well when we talk about locks again we discussed about locks when we talked about the whole synch thread synchronization concept as well and uh, it basically marries very well with the whole concept of locks and atomic packages as well atomic is again a different topic which is used for thread safe uh, types basically but whenever you will hear about concurrency utilities be it in your discussions or be it in your interviews you will be seeing a discussion happening around executors you will hear these terms like executors executor service future completable future callable all of these you will hear the name of all of these classes quite frequently so we uh, these classes were first introduced in java 8 and have been there since then to support the concurrency programming paradigm so i will talk about these three classes broadly in today's session and we'll have a look at a demonstration of these three classes as well uh, let's first talk about executor technically it's an it's an interface it's not a class though i said that it's a class but it's basically an interface an executor is basically a very simple interface which will help you define the subsystems which you want to which you would like to create with the help of threads maybe including thread pools or if you want to do a disk reading and writing operation in an asynchronous way or you want to create some sequence of task frameworks as well so executor will provide you a, a very lightweight framework to do all of that especially around thread pooling and asynchronous io is is where it shines most because in your computer you have limited resources and you would like to uh, dedicate a certain pool of threads for a particular task or for a particular executor object so with that and the second class which we would like to know about is executor service an executor service will provide a more asynchronous task execution framework and this is probably the class which you will be using whenever you're dealing with asynchronous programming in java asynchronous programming basically means that you submitted a particular task but you did not wait for it to be completed you did not hang your process or your thread for that particular task to be completed it's very simple it's very uh, uh, easy to relate this to a real life for example if you are if, you know there are times when you do two things at, at the same time for example uh, let's take a very very simple example if you're just boiling milk uh, on on your gas stove so you put the milk on the gas stove and then you move out for a couple of minutes to do some uh, something else for example maybe checking your mobile for new emails or or doing some other work doing maybe just doing some laundry so uh, you are doing the, you, you submitted the milk boiling task then you moved away from that task because you know that this particular task is going to take some time and you utilize your time somewhere else that's what we mean by asynchronous programming and executor service will provide you with constructs to create a similar behavior in your java program as well so remember about executor and executor service uh, we will look at the implementations later where we can talk about that another interesting class which i would lock, which i would like to talk about is future if we have it here yeah so future is another class which we will be looking at and future is basically uh, to uh, fetch the result of the submitted task again taking the same naive example of the milk milk boiling example so it would be great right if if there is some mechanism or some alarm which just sets off the moment the milk is 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 boiling and it's about to be spilled out it would be great to know that in uh, that uh, in advance 
launched by some alarm or something. So future provides that kind of a carrier or that kind of a, a, a holder where you submitted a particular task, you moved your threads to something else, you did something else, and then you can check with the future object and future object will tell the status of that submitted task, whether it is completed or whether it's still in progress. Once it is complete, then you can fetch the result of that submitted task based on uh, with the future object. So that's the concept of future. So remember executor service and future, they will work quite hand in hand because executor service will be used to submit the task and future will be able to fetch the result of that particular task asynchronously. So that was about a quick theory. You can read more about it in the documentation. You can see an executor service uh, future class. What does what does this basically in these class do? Uh, but to have a look at or, or get a greater sense of this, let's have a look at our demonstration of it to understand these classes better. So let's move to uh, the Eclipse IDE to look at an example. Let me close all the classes and just open a relevant one. So yeah, so let's first deal with the executor interface itself. So if I just minimize this one, here I've created a main class and I've created a public static void main method and you see two static methods here, executor invoke and executor service invoke. I'm basically showing you how you can use executor and executor service. So if you're just using executor, then how you would do that is basically you are going to create a reference of the executor and then the executor needs a basically an, an executor object because it's an executor reference so you need to supply an executor object so either you can supply an inner class right here or you can call uh, you can create a executor type of class which i've created here which is called caller class so i've created a class called caller which implements the executor type and the moment you write implements executor, it will force you to override the execute method. And inside the execute method, you are going to run your own thread. So this is how the current thread or the executor's own thread will be running. So once you have done the initialization, then you can call the execute method on the executor class. Remember you got this object. So you, uh, you can call the executor uh, execute method on the executor object here. And inside this, you can provide this particular Lambda function implementation, which is going to ask you what exactly you want to do when I run this particular thread. So when I run this thread, uh, when Java runs this particular thread, what do you want Java to do? That's something which you will provide here. So this is how you can use, uh, it's a very simple example. Like I said, uh, the, the, this, uh, if I build a more complex example, it will take a lot of time and a lot of other concepts to cover. So treat this as an introductory session and you can basically try to run a very simple example of this, writing whatever complex logic you want to write while the thread is running and put that into this execute. Similarly, if you if you want to use executor service for doing the asynchronous operations, then it will follow the same way, but there are some differences along the way as well. So this is the method which is showing the executor service implementation or, or the way of using executor service. So again, I create a reference of executor service. And then here you see I'm saying executors dot new fixed thread pool with a size of 10. So that's the power of executor service. It is going to create a pool of threads dedicated to itself to do the tasks whichever are written inside here. So whatever you write here, these thread pool will be utilized to execute that particular task. You can assign the size of the thread pool based on how many threads you need. There are multiple static utility methods, like there is one new fixed thread pool which I've used. But if you just do control enter, you will see cached thread pool, a uh, single thread execution, a new work stealing pool. So like I mentioned, there are a lot of classes, interesting classes here, which you can use. For simplicity, I've just used a fixed thread pool here. Once you get the executor service object, then here you called execute, but here you will be calling the submit method. And then the drill goes exactly the same way that you write the Lambda function implementation inside here, basically the functional interface implementation, and you provide your own implementation code, which you would like to run whenever you call the run method, whenever this executor service calls the run method on that particular thread. You can actually go to the submit method and you will see it accepts a runnable. It basically accepts a thread object. So whatever you write inside this particular code will be the public void run implementation of that particular thread class. If you don't, uh, if you don't remember how Threadable works, please go back to my threading uh, tutorial and watch that where I explained the runnable uh, interface and the run method in detail. So that's what we are doing here. So this is for executor and this is for executor service. So let's run this program 
And yes, I mean, nothing because I'm, I'm not doing anything much apart from just doing sysouts here. And that's what you see here, the executor example and the executor service example. So this was about executor and executor service. Now let's deal with another interesting uh, class of, of uh, called future, which I said that I will also talk about. So for that, I've created a separate demo because it deserves a separate demo. It's a very interesting class. So let me just make it full screen. Yeah, so I've created a class called future demo, which has a public static void main method. And again, I'm doing this, this uh, executor service initialization, but this time I'm using a new single thread executor. Now, what does this do? This, this will basically create an executor, which will use a single worker thread operating from an unbounded queue. Remember, even if this single thread terminates due to, let's say a failure during the execution, before the before the graceful shutdown a new one will automatically be spawned and will take its place if the execution is still pending so that's the power of single worker thread from an unbounded queue that's what i've used here based on your use case you can use other ones as well like i mentioned earlier then uh I have the executor service object with me and similar to the previous example, I'm going to call the submit method and inside the submit method, I need to provide the runnable class runnable interfaces implementation and that implementation will basically be of the public void run method. And this is what I want to do in my run method where I'm sleeping the thread for 10 seconds. Thread.sleep method takes milliseconds values as the parameter. So this is 10,000, which means 10 seconds. So I'm sleeping this thread or pausing this thread for 10 seconds and then returning a string called completed. This is what I am doing in the executor service dot submit implementation. The result of it is going to be a future object. Remember the result of the submit task is going to be a future object. So I store that future reference here and then at line 20, I'm using the same feature of uh, future object to ask Java to check if this task is done. And the way you do that is just by calling is done. So till the time there's a negation condition till the time the task is still in progress because this main feature is not done because I've put a negation, then just print this is out there where you say the task is still in progress. It's still not complete. And you pause this particular thread. Remember, this was a different thread. If you, you pause this particular thread for 500 millisecond or basically half a second, and you again check this condition, if it's still not done, you print this again, pause for half a second, again, check this till the time feature dot is done becomes true. When feature dot is done becomes true, that means that this particular task is completed. Now you see, I mean, generally when we execute the programs, the execution happens sequentially, sequentially that after line 17, the control will automatically flow to line 20. And before the control can reach line 20, everything above line 17 has to be completed. That's, that's basically synchronous programming for you. But when you talk about asynchronous programming, using the power of executor service and future objects, you can do something here, which will go into a separate thread and then you can continue your execution here. So this can be in a different method altogether where you submit something. And this is basically checking the status of this task. Understand this very well. This is very important concept that it's not as uh, it's uh, though it's a sequential execution after line 17 line 20 is getting executed, but line 20 is not waiting for everything above line 17 to be finished. It will continue. That's the power of asynchronous programming. So here we are checking this. And once the feature dot future dot is done, say is true, then we say task completed. We, uh, and then you probably would like to fetch the result of this particular task, right? And for that future provides a method called future dot get. This is going to pick the future object state and whatever you are returning from here will be returned here. And then I'm printing the result. So if everything went fine, this result should say completed because that's what I'm returning from this future object. And always remember to shut down your executor service to release the thread pool, which you created here. I've also put a catch block here because I'm using the thread dot sleep method, which will ask you to handle an interrupted exception. And then there is an executor service exception, which is execution and a timeout exception as well. There are other interesting methods as well on the future class, uh, future object, sorry, which is like future dot cancel, where you can cancel explicitly a future task Task, which is currently in progress. You can check the status of it by calling is done, which I've used here. You can also call is canceled to check if the user or some other process explicitly canceled the execution of the submission of the executor service task. So hope this is uh, you are able to understand the flow of it that these block and these block will program will execute them, but they will run in different threads. So let's see what happens. Now I'm going to run this particular program. 
and if I bring this here, you see the task still in progress keeps getting called. So we submitted the task here and now this block is getting executed. This block uh, kept getting executed. So this task did not finish, right? The thread dot sleep was this, this thread, this whole thread was sleeping for 10 seconds, but line 20 did not wait for 10 seconds. It continued execution and it kept checking the future object 10 times at least, or till the whole 10 second sleep was taken away. And one, uh, once that, once this thread woke up, it returned completed feature dot is done became true and it came out and it said task completed. So that's what we get here. And at the end in the result, you get completed, which is, which is what you returned from here. So this is the power of uh, asynchronous programming. Please, like I mentioned, please do read about more about these classes and how they work and what is the paradigm of asynchronous programming. It does make debugging a bit hard at times, but it's a very interesting concept to be used in concurrent applications. And that's all I would like to cover for this particular session. And in the next session, we are going to talk about regex and NIO utilities. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please don't forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.